Hello, Pete. Or should I say, Sneaky Pete. Sneaking around in Jennifer's basement. That isn't gonna end well for you, buddy. So here we are, back to DCOMs, baby. And I even let you guys decide what movie I get to review. Sort of. Now I know everyone kind of wanted me to do The Luck of the Irish, but I kind of decided let's just save it for St. Patrick's Day. Something to look forward to. I mean, this was never really a democracy anyway. So today we're going to look at one of my favorite DCOMs. And I honestly didn't even remember that it was one of my favorite DCOMs until I rewatched it. Honestly, after watching this movie as an adult, the glaring flaws and the hilarity of the movie are very evident now. And don't get me wrong, I still think this movie is a decent movie. It, obviously, in the standards of today, it, it definitely is not great. But I mean, it passes. And again, we are here not to talk about how good it was, but how good it compares to now. I think I'm gonna start mentioning that minute detail every time I make a video like this, because on my Norbert review, it seemed like a lot of people didn't realize that's what I was going for. And they ended up bringing out their torches and pitchforks about it. But today, we are gonna take a trip back in time, literally and figuratively, with Minutemen. But before we go on a nostalgia trip, the holidays are coming up soon, and with the holidays comes buying a buttload of gifts. And since obviously we're in a pandemic, most people are going to be buying gifts online. Or at least I hope they will. So before you go on your crazy buying spree, you need a little bit of protection. With NordVPN. Yeah. I gotcha. NordVPN is the best VPN that you can use and the easiest one to use in my opinion. They have thousands of servers in 60 plus countries and they have 24 seven customer service. Let's be real for a second. You all know, you all know what NordVPN is. You've heard this ad plenty of time, but NordVPN is not just for security reasons. For example, do you use Netflix? Well, guess what? Some of your favorite shows are actually blocked in the US like Rick and Morty, or Always Sunny in Philadelphia. But guess what? Boom, now I'm in Europe. Boom, now I'm in China, now I can watch it. And Nord is actually having a special Black Friday deal. Every purchase of a two year plan gets you 68% off on top of that four extra months for free. And I know, I know. They were one number away from a legendary deal. So what are you guys doing there piddling with your dingles? Get NordVPN now so you can piddle your dingle without people knowing where you're located. You can do it in safety. So go to nordvpn.com slash bionicpig or just go ahead and use code bionicpig and get this amazing 68% off two year deal with four additional months. So this holiday season, give the gift of security. So the movie starts out with your typical 2000s high school intro with some pop punk music playing in the background, you know, kids running around, cheerleaders, football players, and teenagers doing a secret handshake did people actually do that? I mean, maybe I get it if like you're in fifth grade, you know, kids did that for fun, but I just never seen anyone actually do that in high school. Was I not cool? Was I a loser? Oh God. So the movie starts out with three friends going to their first year of high school. Stephanie, who's going to be a cheerleader, Derek, who wants to be a football player, and Virgil, who is kind of just Virgil. He didn't really do anything. So we skip forward a little bit and Derek's at football tryouts. And for some reason, Virgil's just walking around, just cracking jokes, being the cool kid, just randomly. And we look at Derek and he kind of sucks. <laughs> But then a random kid just drives through the football field with some like jet engine on the back. But we find out that that's Derek's neighbor, Charlie, who's only 14 years old and he got into high school early because he's just a genius. Then Derek, like a badass, calls Charlie a dork and then launches the football, boom, knocks him out. Arm. Then the entire football team bullies the shit out of him, you know high school. And Virgil, being the nice guy that he is, goes over and tells the guy, hey, stop, don't do that. Then Virgil ends up getting pushed around with him, and then that seals his fate. He is officially a nerd. And I guess Derek became the starting quarterback of the football team just because he hit a kid on the head with a football. So after this scene, Derek becomes the coolest kid in school, and Virgil becomes a nerd. So then we time travel a little bit and we go three years into the future <laughs> boom charlie and virgil are now good friends derek is now the starting quarterback of the football team and he's also dating stephanie who virgil likes so this whole movie is basically going to be a nerds versus jock situation then we meet zeke 
the super cool badass motorcycle driving black color wearing black nails painted guy god damn it he's so hot Senior year, I'm still eating at the dork table. Jesus! The nerd stereotypes of the 2000s were so strong, dude. I mean, just look at these kids. Like, throughout this whole movie, they just really push that nerd stereotype to the absolute limit. Throughout this whole movie, there's only two types of people. Popular kids and nerds. Zero. Nothing else. Oh yeah, there's also an older girl that's into Charlie. Well, that explains it. What is your deal? Forget it. I'm married to science. Hey, congratulations, buddy. <laughs> you know, a part of me just feels like they just grabbed a random hat and just ripped up a paper full of nerd words and just pulled them out at random. All right, all right, here we go. Girl bad. Okay, there's one. Science, of course. Nerds love science. Okay. Awkward handshake. Okay, we're just gonna put that in one quick little scene and then we're all good. Time. Tesla was so far advanced over his contemporaries that... Really? Zeke is just full-on carving his name into his binder? Look, look, I know they really want everyone to know that he's a badass and he lives life on the edge, but what dude in his right mind would grind his own name into a freaking binder? Zeke! That's who. So after a little bit of a nerd salute from the AV club, Charlie lets Virgil in on a little secret. He figured out time travel. Yeah? What you're looking at is a successful simulation of practical time travel. Or, I don't know, maybe it's just a video of a black and white tunnel. So Charlie then explains that they could only go 48 hours in the past, and then he spends the next 10 minutes of the movie basically trying to convince Virgil to do it with him. So after Virgil gets convinced, they decide to go find someone who is good at hardware. So the obvious place that they're gonna look is none other than the badass Zeke, who works on motorcycles and cars. So I guess a mechanic and a time travel hardware just go hand in hand. Mechanics are just the time travelers of the future. Your cat is freaking me out. His name is Albert Feinstein. Oh, here, wait, let me get my nerd hat. Einstein, just throw Einstein in there. A anywhere, just throw it in there. So Zeke just randomly just says, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Sounds like it'll work. Yeah, Mongo Reed. You work on motorcycles. How does that translate? So their next step is to find a location to build the time machine. And instead of going off school property to hide it from everyone, they decide to just go up to the vice principal and ask him for a room. The vice principal is a very interesting character because he never once helps kids who are being bullied because he believes that that is a system in place and that is how high school is supposed to work. And actually, this is a pretty good representation of teachers back then. To be fair, they could be way better now, but at least back then, a lot of times they kind of just turn a blind eye to someone being bullied and just let it happen because they're like oh that's just high school is that chester in the vending machine hey fella aren't you gonna do something like what change the way high school works <laughs> no gentlemen everything in this world has an order there are those who stuff others into vending machines and uh, those who get stuffed into vending machines it's just the way the system works so they end up convincing the vp to let them have their own club and their own room by giving him change for a dollar easy sell someone call extreme classroom makeover now oh what was that what time is it oh it is a 2000s decom now let me ask you guys again what time is it it's montage time, baby! So they just steal a bunch of shit around the school without getting noticed. So they get the time machine working, so next step is just to jump right into it. Almost. Nobody. Okay. Wait a second. What are you guys doing with that cat? Come on. Come on. Why does this always happen with animals? <sighs> Damn it. If only Peter Jones was here, he could do something. Come in here and shoot me or something, but that's impossible. Wait a second. 
he time traveled back in time and saved that dog from Norbit. Wait, when was Norbit made? 2007, when was Minutemen made? 2008, that could mean, oh, it is, it's him, Peter saved the cat. Holy shit, who are you? Hello, FBI and shit. We're looking for Mr. Peter Jones. <laughs> Peter Jones? <laughs> well, that's a stupid name. Why would you Silence, boy! We know everything about who he's been in contact with and where he's been, but we've lost the man. I don't think you fully understand who you've been in contact with. Uh, I, uh, uh, uh. He acts like he's your friend, but you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> Seem to have been shot in the back. Cheerio! Oh my god! Who the hell is that? Jesus Christ, Peter, what have you gotten yourself into? So anyway, the cat comes back, and how they are able to tell that the cat went back in time, get this, is they put a watch on the cat. And when the cat came back, the watch was one minute. That's right, one minute difference. And they are calling that time travel. Have they ever heard of clocks being fast or slow? Einstein's clock is exactly one minute behind mine and still ticking. As far as he's concerned, the trip was instantaneous. That's why his watch is exactly one minute behind mine. He skipped over that minute to instantly arrive at this moment in time. My boyfriend is a lying cheese brain. Yeah, come on, Steph. I mean, Jocelyn's hot, but she's a total bottom feeder. Wow, Derek's kind of a dick. So they do their first attempt to time travel and they attempt to win the lottery. But it ended up backfiring because they're underage. So they told a random street performer to buy that ticket for them. He ends up winning the lottery. So that just basically shows that they can time travel. So then Charlie lays it on pretty thick to Virgil that they are not allowed to tell anyone about the time traveling device. You think he's gonna tell someone? I don't know, seems like a little bit of foreshadowing. So now they are gifted with the power of time travel. What are they gonna do next? stop crime maybe they're gonna save someone they love from dying or getting hurt no what they're gonna do is become bully hunters hell yeah dude time traveling device yeah fuck doing important things let's stop bullies from hurting nerds look i know bullies are definitely like a big problem and they do a lot of harm to people but um that's something that we could definitely tackle without a time machine you know, I don't know, maybe they could do something that could actually save the planet or the world. It's literally time travel, but no, they're just gonna stop bullies from attacking nerds. So Jeanette, the girl who is obsessed with Charlie, ends up finding where they are because their club is just open to everyone. Wouldn't that just be a giant glaring problem? So Jeanette just randomly gives them matching outfits with the right size, just out of nowhere. So now they look like a squad, the bully hunter squad. So their first attempt at saving a nerd is a nerd got his clothes stolen and he ended up having to walk around school naked. So they went back in time and gave him gangster clothes. Don't be afraid. We're here to help. Oh, you can keep those. I got myself some new threads. <laughs> Look, I get going back in time and giving the nerds some clothes, but did they really have to dress him up like that? I mean, was he even dressing like that cool back then? I don't remember. So after that little debacle, they become famous around the school and even the VP calls them out. A group of students dressed in snow suits disrupted a gym class. Let me make it perfectly clear that once you are identified, you will be severely punished. Except I think that's a dangling participle. Hate it when those things dangle. God damn it, Derek, are you talking about your penis? So then this stupid bitch seduces a nerd to bring over the food to them. And then she just moves the wet floor sign and then the nerd falls down and the food flies everywhere all over. Can I just ask for a second, what the hell was the point of that? Like as those girls, 
You just wasted so much food. You probably were waiting for a while and you just literally just let your food get thrown on the ground just so you can bully an innocent child. I don't know, maybe I'm getting so angry about this just because I'm hungry. Why would you waste food like that? Way to go, Eugene. Jesus. Was 2007 really like this? I mean, if I was in that situation, normally people would be asking if he was okay, but literally everyone in the whole restaurant just starts laughing at him. That's kind of brutal, man. These kids suck. But Zeke was there and he saw everything. Oh, oh my God, he has cool cup. He has the cool cup. They all have the cool cup. Holy shit. Honestly, this is the highlight of the whole movie. This looks like a job for the bully hunters. So they go in, they stop the kid from falling, and then they make a mop fall on the girls. Get fucked. But quick question though, if Zeke was there witnessing it, wouldn't he be there again in past form and then see his future self come in and save him? And then there would be some weird uh, paradox, uh, black hole situation, I don't know. Isn't there something about seeing yourself in the past? Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop questioning a science fiction logic, but they're just doing a poor job at consistency when it comes to science fiction. And then we get a badass montage of the bully hunters running around saving the kids. But what all uh -oh, looks like big governments onto their asses, but they start to notice weird things happening when they save a few nerds. For some weird reason, when they save a nerd from getting embarrassed, they just become popular. I mean, I'm not really sure how this translates, but it also gives them a gigantic ego and they just become annoying bullies themselves. So they save a bunch of nerds, things are starting to get weird. Stephanie comes up and tells Virgil that she is actually going to get her scholarship to the college that she wanted and her audition is tomorrow important information for later so then charlie talks to virgil and zeke and explains to them that he actually stole the time traveling theory from nasa itself i stole it from nasa you robbed nasa kind of a big deal so that basically means you know time travel is a no-no no more time travel but then virgil comes to school the next day stephanie broke her leg and she was supposed to have her cheerleading audition today and she broke her leg so then Virgil convinces Charlie and Zeke to do one last time travel to save Stephanie. So Virgil goes back in time, does a barrel roll, saves Stephanie, but then Stephanie realizes who he is. Oh shit! Oh, so now shit. everything is out of whack. The whole high school hierarchy of popular kids and nerds are all mending together and switching. And that's not okay. According to my calculations, you guys are in my way. Oh God, no. Don't do, don't say that. Don't say that. Come on. So Stephanie goes to confront Virgil about his time traveling deeds and he admits that he is one of the Minutemen. And this is where everything goes poopy pants, stinker dinker. So Stephanie gets the idea to go with Derek and beg Virgil to fix the football game for him and stop the nerd from running around streaking so he could win the game. So Derek pulls out the, man, I'm so sorry about what happened in freshman year. Like we were great buds. And like after that, you know, it's like, it sucks, man. I wish we could get back to our friendship, man. This has nothing to do with your time traveling though. Derek's kind of a dick. So after Virgil saves Derek's game, Derek has deemed Virgil necessary of popular. I dub the popular kid. So Virgil ends up ignoring Charlie, goes to a banger ass party, and Virgil starts kind of leaning toward being an asshole. Not only did he ignore Charlie and go to a party, but after he calls Charlie, he apologizes to Charlie, he accepts the apology, then he straight ghosts Charlie because Stephanie is crying on the other line about Derek cheating on her. And he leaves Charlie on hold all night. So then Derek goes to Virgil and begs Virgil, yes, he begs Virgil to get Stephanie to not see him cheat on her. Derek's a dick. Let me think about it. Yeah, yeah, sure. So all distraught walking home, trying to figure out what he's going to do next. He gets yoinked by the FBI. I'm joking, stop, stop, I'm the break, stop. And apparently all of them 
got yoinked by the FBI. So Virgil, being the smart boy with a B minus in government class, he tells him that he doesn't have any evidence and he can't hold them there. So he's like, yep, you're right. See you guys later. Then after Virgil was already a dick to Charlie twice, he blames Charlie for the whole situation. Way to go, naughty Ned. Thanks to you, we have the FBI on our backs. This part is just so random out of nowhere. Like Virgil just out of nowhere is just a giant asshole. Like he ignores Charlie twice and then he makes fun of Charlie and also makes fun of Zeke. We gave you a life before us. You were this big guy everyone was afraid of. You better shut up, Virgil. You're being mean, Virgil. Charlie, why don't you just go home to your computer and your cat? It just felt weird and out of nowhere to have a 180 character flip of Virgil being a really nice, friendly guy, and then just all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, but I guess it was just like the popularity getting to his head, and he's like, I would rather be popular than be friends with these losers. So Virgil ends up agreeing to help Derek. Why? I mean, Derek is dating uh, the girl that he wants to be with, and he's going to help Derek uh get away with cheating on her virgil you're kind of stupid oh yeah also um charlie finds out they created a black hole uh, spit it out, Bluebird. A black hole! that's bad right all of this just for saving a few nerds from getting bullied so now they're all going to homecoming because you know it's a high school movie you can't have a high school movie without a homecoming or a prom. Come on, guys. So Derek and Virgil leave homecoming in order to go do the time machine thing to save his own ass. And for some reason, the entire school follows them because they think they're fighting. But Virgil finally wises up and tells him that he's not going to help him. Derek, I don't think I can do this. Stephanie, I just, I just think... Dude, don't tell me you're going to try to steal my girl. Virgil, we have a small problem. We have less than an hour to save the planet. So, big mm. climax incoming. There's a giant black hole that's opening in the middle of the football field that could eventually destroy the entire world. They only have minutes to stop it, and they have to jump inside the black hole and destroy it from the inside. Doesn't really make much sense, but... Who cares? Well, yeah, I mean, sure, the world is ending in a few minutes. Still have time for a slow-mo badass walk, am I right, guys? So what do you guys think is going to be in this black hole? Are they going to be thrown in a different dimension? Going to see different planets, multiple universes? Maybe they'll just die. They'll get sucked inside of the black hole and never to return. Oh, they already stopped the black hole? Well, that was pretty anticlimactic. So since they have extra time for some reason, Virgil realizes what day it is. It's the first day of high school, freshman year, the day that he turned from a cool kid to a nerd. He could change that forever. He could become popular, good friends with Derek, finally. And then Charlie tells him that if he changes this past, he will never be friends with Charlie and he will never be friends with Zeke and he will only be friends with assholes like Derek. Because I've, I've got a much better idea. I mean, why don't we smear this all over him? Yeah. Wow. Derek's a dick. So they travel back to the present and everything is back to normal. Then Virgil stands up to Derek and is like, yo, I know you're cheating on your girl. Then he goes up to Stephanie and straight just drops a bomb. I like you. Stephanie looks back. She likes him. They're going to do stuff later. It's, it's a whole thing. Then they live happily ever after. What the heck is that? this oh! Oh! Get his own. Well, that's a stupid what is happening fight. wait a second i'm in the past wait this is where the guy got shot but who the hell did that what the hell did someone leave a toy okay Oh. What you're getting yourself into. Oh! Seemed to have been shot in the back. Cheerio! Oh, oh my god! Oh! Oh god! Oh god! Oh! What? 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 What the hell just happened? Did I just kill a man? So, all in all, this movie's not bad, really. I mean, sure, there's a glaring amount of plot holes. 
a lot of things that don't really make much sense but still you know it's a 2000s decom it's honestly one of the better ones out of a lot of the decoms i still found some enjoyment watching it just laughing at all the things we thought were cool back in the day so let's review this guys in today's standards let's review this movie i would give it a five out of ten in today's standards the nerd and the jock cliches were in full force there's so many weird plot holes with the time traveling that they could have easily fixed but honestly the movie's probably one of the better versions of a decom that i've seen in a while so thank you all for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it but please before you guys go check out my twitch i'm probably going to be either streaming right now or very soon also go check out my twitters and go check out my instagrams you guys all know how the plugs work okay just go to my socials interact with me we'll become best friends probably not but we'll we'll become we'll become acquaintances maybe you're all my best friends. Bye.